Bristow. And here is Bristow. Mike Smith on the right. Nice one, Mike. He's through and up a place. So, Mike Smith on his way, chasing his teammate Rob Gravitt, and Ian Forrest, BMW M3, is out of the race onto the grass. Crudgington and Dowsett coming down together towards the chicane, and Dowsett is starting to challenge. He's going to try and take. Yes, here we are, in car with Dowsett. He's going through on the inside. He goes through on the inside. He takes Crudgington. That is Brody coming up behind both of them. Behind Brody, there is Kravitz. Over the line now, Brody takes both of them. And now it's Rob Kravitz's turn. Up to Campbell, the right-hander, after they have cleared the left suite that they're into now. Brody approaches Campbell. Dowsett and Crudgington behind him, and Rob Kravitz is about to take them both. But Crudgington is right up alongside Dowsett. He's going to take the lead. Kravitz is going to take them both right on the apex and they hit each other. Dows it. Oh, my goodness. A full 360 degree spin. The wheel is off. The grass has caught fire. But Rob Kravitz looks at Dows it out up onto the bank. Kravitz is out of the car. It miraculously, they are both perfectly okay as the fire marshals slip on the grass. They're going to have to jump down onto the bank to set about the fire. They've got it out already. Well done. Well done indeed. A very nasty accident. But amazingly, Phil Dowsett looks perfectly all right. So now let's have a look at it from his point of view again. There is Dave Brody in front. We're turning into the right hander. And there is Gravit. Slam bang into the tire wall. And Dowsett does the same thing. Thank heavens for that protection. And now Crudgington leads class D. Rouse is right up behind him. Number one, second in the race. And then it's Harvey and Newman, really close to each other. And this is Mike Smith on the right, trying to lap Lawrence Bristow. And they've touched each other at the chicane, and Bristow is off, nearly hits the pit lane armco. Miraculous recovery. And there on the left is Mike Smith, away he goes. And Mike Smith has got the momentum, he's pulling away. But Lawrence Bristow, may have been lapped, but he isn't giving in. And watch that turbo gauge needle, the big white one. He's definitely reeling Mike Smith in again. And that is the BARC rescue unit. Now, the British Automobile Racing Club runs Thruxton, and everything you need for a rescue is in that vehicle. Medical equipment, cutters, resuscitation gear, and they're deliberately leaving the vehicle there to protect them while they rush up to see if Gravit's okay. Well, he is okay. He's out of the car, actually. And there he is. But he must have a very sore neck. Now, let's have a replay. On the left is Crudgington, then it's Dowsett. On the right is Gravit. Gravit turns in. There is contact. Straight onto the grass, into the tar wall. Dowsett does the same thing. 360 degree spin from Rob Gravit. The wheel is off. The back is up, and the grass catches fire. That could have been very, very nasty indeed. And Dave Brody is slowing. There he is, and that is Andy Rouse going through. He's gone from third to first. And Tim Harvey is really close to him. There is Rouse, and there is Harvey. Now, I wonder what's wrong with Brody. There's the answer. Look at the left rear wheel. There is no tire there. trying to get back. Now, there is Rouse leading. Harvey in second place, right behind him. Mike Newman in third position, number three. And Carl Jones goes past Brody up into fourth position. What a fantastic development as Dave Brody rattles into the pit lane on his rear rim. Lap 14. There's three laps to go after this. And Rouse and Harvey, with their headlights blazing to warn people that they're coming through. Tim Harvey catch and pass Andy Rouse. There is Rouse, there is Harvey. It's getting closer and closer all the time. That is Dave Brody's wheel. Look at it. Almost finished now. Just tighten up the nut. Dave Brody can get away, but he's really out of the running altogether. And a Goodwood on the way to Village Corner at 130 miles an hour. 
past the last of the tailenders goes Tim Harvey, and now on the fastest part of the course, he can attack Andy Rouse and go for the lead. Ralph Brooklyn's the left-hander, down to the chicane, and at the chicane. There is less than a second between the first and second places, Andy Rouse and Tim Harvey. Much less than a second now. Out of the chicane, up towards Allard. Rouse goes over the line. Harvey goes, and the checkered flag is out. They're stopping the race. Now, that must be because of the accident further ahead. They're all slowing down. So lucky for Andy Rouse. He wins, the first man to win twice this season. Tim Harvey second, just as he looked likely to win, and Mike Newman third. And no wonder they stopped it. That's a real fire hazard. So, overall victory for Andy Rouse with Tim Harvey in second place, Mike Newman third, Carl Jones in fourth position, Mike Smith fifth, and Sean Walker sixth after a really exciting race. And a race that had a finish that came as a surprise to many and a relief to Andy Rouse. Luck had been on his side at last. Did I short him? Yeah, had a bad one out. Yeah, I know, yes. So that wasn't bad, was it? But luck has changed. I think so, yeah, for the better, fortunately. Well, that was hard going. Was the checker flag a complete surprise? What were things like down at the complex? Well, they'd, uh, the accident occurred uh, about seven laps before the end, and I thought the situation had been stabilised, but apparently, talking to the clerk of the course, there was fuel spilling out of one of the cars and running across the track, and that's what prompted the decision. But I thought things would, were, were stabilised, so I was watching the laps to go sign and, and planning the rest of the race. But there you are. So you can't feel aggrieved at the decision, but unlucky nevertheless. No, on safety grounds, it was the right thing to do, but uh, I'm sure my turn will come. Rob Gravett was to bounce back from that near disaster at Thruxton to take victory in the next round on the short circuit at Silverstone. Tim Harvey and Andy Rouse trailing in just a second and a half behind. And this was the round where John Clellan suffered a blow to his overall championship hopes after losing a wheel. The championship, after all its dramas, was settling into a mid-season pattern. Sittner agreed to give his support to Weaver's championship challenge, and in the Silverstone Grand Prix round, an emphatic victory for Andy Rouse. The really close racing in this round was back down the field. But who is going to be 10th at Stowe? It's Mike Smith, or is it because Jerry Marnie is going through? It's Marnie 10th at the moment. Smith on the right. In car with Marnie. Smith is gaining. Smith goes through. Club corner now. And Smith is ahead. It's Smith in the red white car, 10th. Marnie behind him in 11th position. Coming up to Abbey for the last time, and Marnie is going for it. He can come out of Smith's slipstream. He's doing it. Down through the gearbox. Marnie ahead. Smith coming through to take him on the outside. He's going to go very wide indeed. Marnie's got the inside line. He hits Smith. Smith shakes his fist. But Mike Smith takes that 10th position, no doubt about it, into the chicane, out of the chicane. Mike Smith in 10th position. And now let's have a look at it again from Jerry Marnie's point of view. Racing up to Breach with Mike Smith on the right at 145 miles an hour. He looks right. Where is he? He looks left and he's there. Mike Smith on the left. Bang, he hits him. But overall, a superb win for Andy Rouse with Rob Gravitt's second place consolidating his class lead in the championship. And a super comeback drive for Guy Edwards ahead of teammates Tim Harvey and Lawrence Bristow with at last a points finish for Graham Good. So the overall championship coming into round eight, the first of the brand's hatch rounds. A two-point gap between Weaver and Cleland, Dowsett hanging on from Class D in third, and Rob Gravett leading Class A, but 15 points adrift overall. But Gravett was on pole at Brands, he headed the race, but his teammate was heavily involved behind. Tiff Nidell, the commentator. Down on the Grand Prix circuit, and Gravett getting way out front, but now it's Harvey ahead of Smith. Rouse breathing the easy. No, through. Smith comes back. He wants that third place straight back again, and he takes it off Harvey. Running a bit wide there, and Harvey maybe looking to get the place back. They touch, 
and Smith hunting sideways. Harvey and he both head to the gravel trap and well, that's a great shame to lose uh, what looked a very promising battle between these two drivers out so early in the race. Mike Smith there, not getting out yet. Maybe, yes, he is going to try and escape from the gravel, but uh, there's no escape from those gravel traps. We see it again now in slow motion. Smith a little bit slow out of Hawthorne's there because he did that overtaking manoeuvre, but Harvey not really getting even alongside in the braking zone before there's contact between the two. And really, I think uh, Tim was being a bit over-ambitious there. Smith had the line. There we see Tim Harvey now clambering over the tarwell. Well, I'm sure they'll both have very, very different versions of what's just happened. But uh, we... And into the tyre barriers, two BMWs. That was Godfrey Hall, I think, first in. That's the top of Paddock Hill and a very bent BMW for Ian Forrest. That uh, right at the top of Paddock Hill bend. There's tyres and debris all over the circle. I should imagine this could well be a red flag situation, really. Those cars are going to take some moving in for us, thankfully getting out and walking away from his bent BMW. And Godfrey all already out of his car. And uh, there you can see the damage. And I think this race will have to be stopped. Indeed, yes, there's the red flag that's uh, shown at the start-finish line. They only show the red flag at the start-finish line. Drivers are warned about it by the black flag there being waved, and they won't be doing any overtaking now. In car with Jerry Barney being overtaken once, but overtaken twice. Black flag now, man. Jerry's got the message over to his fellow competitors. Here we see the excellent rescue services uh, in action, but here we see Godfrey Hall heading towards the barriers. The wheels actually were locked up from well before impact, and I think coming over the slight crest at Paddock, the cars do go light. He probably locked his rear wheels and uh, lost control. Now back to the gravel trap. These cars, if they can get them back on the grid, could be re-racing. Well, we're going to see if we can get another chance. Um, I guess. I don't know what the rules are, we're going to check on it, but if I can get this back, we will uh, get going again. That was a stupid manoeuvre on Tim's part. I'd have never seen him driving like that. He wants it all his own way. He wants to have the room to overtake, but he doesn't want it to give the room anybody else. It's just ridiculous. Anyway. I'm not the first person to have clashed swords with Mike Smith this year, and I don't suppose I'll be the last. It's just amazing how often he's involved, and it's never his fault. Well, every driver always has his opinion, and uh, here we see this slow motion again, and certainly Smith is ahead, he's on the right line, and it's Harvey that batters into the rear wing of Smith's car, just at the, really the beginning of the braking area. This time it really was Mike's line, I'm afraid, Tim. Restart race, once again grab it out front, and Mike Smith mounting a really strong challenge on Andy Rouse. Through Drew, it's bumper to bumper. Smith really driving a very sensible race at the moment. He's waiting for Rouse to maybe slide a little wide once too often, and he's going to be through here in a good position to overtake up to 30s. But no, Rouse at. I said no, but Mike Smith sees an opportunity, saw the door left open. He didn't refuse the invitation. In he goes. In car with Andy Rouse, dropped down to third place. This long haul, the only straight you really get at Brands Hatch. Fifth gear as they approach Hawthorne's, down to four. Into this 110 mile an hour corner. Rouse accelerating hard now in fourth. He's going to break and drop to third for Westfield. Smith easing away all the time. So really that was a good overtaking manoeuvre. Very cleanly done by Mike Smith. And he's up into an excellent. He leaps over Dingle Dell. That's the curb that uh, you shouldn't go over, Mike. And you can see now how Andy Rouse has suddenly closed back up on again, Mike, because he just clipped that curb. But again, Rouse sliding wide, working very, very hard indeed. Clearways, again, third gear. Mike takes a very neat line through. Andy Rouse blows as close as he can, but now it's a cartel 1-2 as these Australian imported Sierras show Andy Rouse the way. There's been a battle between these Dick Johnson prepared cars that come up from Australia to challenge the all-conquering Andy Rouse engineering cars, which of course Rouse runs and so do the Labatt's team. So it's a Rouse car third and fourth, but it's the Yokohama tyre team out front. 
here. Midfield battle is still plenty. That's Lawrence Bristow coming well up the field. Jerry Marney ahead of him and uh, ahead of Marnie Dave Pinkney, who suddenly pulls to the side. Pinkney going very well, the best he's run for a while, but he's just pulled off wide as Bristow tries the long outside line. It's a very difficult line to take, but it doesn't pay off. And Mike O'Brien looks to come up and retake Lawrence Bristow. But Lawrence really stormed up through the field, up to 12th place, right from the back of the grid through all the class Ds, Cs, and even up past the BMWs. So Lawrence Bristow, a charging drive. He's had a trying day, but now he's looking to get this place off Marnie. Marnie, of course, a front runner last year, but not so far this year. Up front, though, we have Smith and Rouse. Rouse still keeping a look at Smith's rear of the Sierra as Gravitz disappearing further and further away, but Andy would like that place back if possible. Back to the field we go, and here we see again Bristow chasing after Marnie, looking on the inside of Surtees and shoveling Barney around. Barney goes wide, Bristow looks to the left. I don't think that's on Lawrence, but it is on. <laughs> Lawrence, who uh, is charging through, he's driven so well this year. Of course, I enjoyed sharing a win with him at Donington, and now he's charging through the field. He's not going to win this one, but he's going to get a long way at this rate. So Bristow moves up to 11th. Paddock. Marnie, as I've said, he's been playing around with tyres this year. Last year he was up the front, but now he's switched to Pirelli's, but he hasn't quite got the car handling to the way he likes on these tyres. Bristow and the Andy Rouse engineering car, though, he's on Pirelli's as well, pulling away from Marnie and looking up the field for uh, seventh, eighth or ninth places, and Lawrence, steady. That's going wide out of Graham Hill Bend. Down midfield, you see there the Maserati 5 Turbo make a return to the series, Nick May, but uh, obviously in trouble as Smith and Rouse go past. This battle for second place still being waged, and uh, it's a very tricky track. It's a long, hard race in this heat, but uh, Rouse following Smith. Smith there having to get the back markers. This is where experience, of course, is going to tell. Andy Rouse knows a lot about overtaking back markers, and Mike Smith relatively inexperienced compared with Rouse and there you see he's lost the speed coming out of Surtees Rouse is looking up the inside and Mike gives him space and certainly that was gently driving by Mike he did give Rouse the space Smith lost time overtaking the back mark of the left hand he didn't have the speed out towards clearways Rouse pounced on the moment and through he goes to take second place back off Smith so can Smith now counter attack through Paddock and uh, Rouse sliding wide, grab it there, we see flash through the picture into Druid, a, a, quite a fair lead, and Smith now is all to do again. He's, uh, we've seen this picture before. And there we see uh, Lawrence Bristow, he's sliced past Carl Jones, and uh, in the background also Mike Newman, so that's two more Sierras he's overtaken after we saw him get past Marnie, and uh, he's now right up into eighth place, and going very strongly indeed. From the back of the green, Lawrence Bristow up to eighth. Out of Druids, down through Graham Hill Bend. Again, using every inch of the track, and uh, this time not that extra bit. Behind him, we see the BMW boys still doing battle for the Class B honours. Of course, uh, now Weaver well in front of the championship ahead of Sitman Class B, so really Sitman now should be holding station. But uh, however much you have agreements before the race, drivers never trust drivers. But uh, Frank seems to be a lot more friendly than he was at the beginning of the year. To Hawthorne. The six speed gearboxes used in these BMWs. Six down to fifth for Hawthorns. And we see really sitting up, not really working as hard as he was at the beginning of the year. And these two now in convoy and mainly trying to make sure that De Weaver wins the class as fast as lap and makes enough points for this championship challenge that they're putting up. Up to Dingledell, James Weaver going so well, Frank Sittner following behind. On there, sadly, that's uh, one of the Sierras out. That's uh, Graham Good, who uh, was running in the top ten, but sadly the end of the race and a spin. Nick May having more problems with the Maserati, and uh, he's right on the apex. He wants a push. He stalled the car, and uh, our marshals as ever moving forward to help out. In car with Guy having a very big moment there, under braking for Surtees, that is, and. Uh, trying to get the right gear, dumping the clutch, the wheel spin, opposite lock, so a little bit of a moment under braking for Guy Edwards, who nevertheless is holding down a, a very consistent and steady fifth place. Grab it though, well out front. There we see the order.
Bordo, Gravit Rouse, Smith Harvey, Edward Smith, and Mike Newman going well in six. Well, we say Harvey, but Harvey there, we see the very battered and bent, war-torn Sierra. Obviously a bit of a problem for Tim, and uh, maybe some damage has caused some engine trouble or overheating. So that's the end of Harvey's challenge. But here we have Rod Gravit on the last lap through Hawthorne. And it's been a very, very good drive. We haven't seen much of him, but uh, he's made the most of his very well-prepared track star team car. He's made the most of his Yokohama tyres, which have obviously come good this weekend, as we've seen. Mike Smith doing such a strong, supporting performance in this team. And really, uh, this swing-swung battle between Andy Raz there not giving up, whereas we see Rob Gravit virtually cruising to the line. Andy Rouse is going to try all he can right to the last minute, and certainly Gravitz lost a lot of his lead over the last laps as Gravitz toured in. But uh, Rouse in his charge has dropped Mike Smith behind a bit. Smith, although he's still heading for an excellent third, but it's Rob Gravitz who steals the honours. A very good win indeed, ahead of Rouse. And there, the Trackstar team cheering Mike Smith over for a very good third place indeed. And uh, Lawrence Bristow charged up, he eventually got sixth place. Lawrence Bristow's charge through the field emphasised also the pace, power and fierce competition among the Class A cars. Bristow in sixth place behind Mike Newman. The Calibre team had taken second and fourth, but the Trackstar team were first and third with Rob Gravitt and Mike Smith. Snetterton the next round, Rob Gravitt heading for another victory and two laps to go, it's Rouse and Harvey battling for second in car again with Tim and uh, Tim working really hard indeed there's no worry about tyre grip now it's go for everything you've got there's only a couple of laps left and Tim wants that second place Gravit still has the problems of back markers to get past inside the Vauxhall tandem and uh, all three leaders bottling up as we lead up to the last lap Harvey working hard to stay on Rouse's tail, following him through the holes. Rouse punching the holes in the back markers, and Tim Harvey staying right on his bumper and following him through. Gravit looks safe out front at the moment, and uh, Harvey all over the back of Andy Rouse, into Russell. And Ken, we're back over those curbs again. Harvey more so than Rouse on this occasion. So Rob Gravit has the breathing space. It's really all about second place at the moment between Rouse and Harvey through Riches. Both cars are out onto the rumble strips. This time Rouse blocks to the right. He doesn't want Harvey coming through on the inside again. Gravity is safe. Harvey now tries to concentrate on getting the power down, having forced Andy onto the inside. Andy a bit slower out of Sear. And Harvey now right in his slipstream as they come up to the S's. Down the straight, Harvey looking up the inside. A late manoeuvre on the brakes. Rouse is hanging on on the outside. Side by side they are. Will Tim hold on? No, he had to give way to Roush. Roush had the inside line for the right-handed corner. He holds the second place. Through the bomb hole, into Corum now. Roush a little bit of a breathing space. Again, more back markers ahead, but there's going to be no problems. It's only Russell Corner before the flag and another victory for Rob Gravit. The track star team really coming out on top at the moment. A win for Gravit, Rouse fighting in second and a very good drive from Harvey in third. Fourth win of the season for Rob Gravit, but only a second covering the first three. Will Hoy in fourth, making it another excellent race for the Trackstar team. Lawrence Bristow fifth, Sean Walker sixth. Class A is certainly where the racing is and where the interest is. And Gravit, against a lot of expectations, seems to have taken a grip on the competition. An 18-point lead over Rouse and Rouse-prepared cars fill the next two places. So after nine rounds, it's still a two-point gap between Weaver of Class B and Cleland of Class C, with Rob Gravit having moved up to third overall and leading the field round the warm-up lap for round 10 at Brands Hatch. It is very hot. Brands Hatch is a superb circuit with just about every kind of corner and gradient. There are six very closely matched Paul Sierra Cosworths in the front three rows of the rolling grid using three different makes of tyre. And Andy Rouse on the left is in pole position. This will be good. Into Paddock Bend, it's Rouse leading, Kravitz second, Brody in third place, Lawrence Bristow is fourth. Now Hailwood rise into Druids and Van Cowan runs very wide indeed. Now we're looking back from Rob Gravitt's car. Brody's ahead, that's Lawrence Bristow immediately behind. He's in fourth position. So now, out of Druids, there they go, the Class C and D men. And somebody's hit Rossiter, Rossiter's Astra, there it is, pushed out of the race. And now, down they go, round Graham Hill Bend, and there's another one.
one. It's Jerry Marnie. Jerry Marnie's Ford Sierra out. And at Surtees, they stream round that Sean Walker. And ahead of him, it's Rouse, Brody, Gravin, Bristow. Over the crest, Pilgrim's drop. Ed Gravit takes Brody up into second place. Now we look back, and that is Dave Brody right behind us at 120 miles an hour. Into Hawthorne Bend and out of it. Down to Westfield. And you can just see Bristow's car behind in fourth position. There it is, and he's challenging. Lawrence Bristow challenging Dave Brody, who holds third position. So it's Cosworth's first, second, third, fourth, Sterling's Ben, Rouse, Gravid, Brody smoking a bit. Lawrence Bristow behind him in fourth position. On to Clearways, where with Lawrence Bristow, watch his gear changes. Up into fifth, back into third. And ahead, it's Rouse, the leader. Gravid in second place. Dave Brody, they're well spread out. Down the Brabham Street, 130 miles an hour. Over the line, Rouse, Gravid. Into Paddock. That's Thomas Bensera, the Czechoslovakian driver, in the blue car, being chased by Carl Jones. Ninth and tenth. Jerry Marney back in the race, and here's what happened on Cooper Street. Ahead is Graham Goon. Jerry drifts a bit, hits the grass, loses traction, spins off. But he'll be back. Surtees Bend, Andy Rouse right behind him, Rob Gravitt. And not so far behind them, Dave Brody, Lawrence Bristow, Mike Smith, there they are, all together. And as Mike Smith chases them down Pilgrim's drop, Bristow goes past Brody, up into third position. And there is Andy Rouse chasing him, Rob Gravitt. Now the gap, three together. Bristow is the third man, but here are the leaders. Rob Gravitt is pushing Andy Rouse very hard indeed. Out of Westfield, on to Dingle Dell, through Dingle Dell corner. Right, left, right, and leaping over the curbing, it's Bristow. Carl Jones goes up and out of the race, parks alongside the Armco. The leaders on their way to Clearways, and here they are. Rob Gravitt attacking Andy Rouse at 130 miles an hour as they go down the Brabham Strait, over the line. Rouse. Leeds, Gravit, second, Bristow in third position. Then it's Brody, Smith, Guy Edwards, into Paddock. And now Mike Smith is right up with Dave Brody. Fourth position. Rouse, Gravit, Bristow, Brody, and Mike Smith attacking in the red and white Sierra. Round Druids. In car with Mike Smith, down to Graham Hill Bend. Third gear, 85 miles an hour towards Surtees, the left hand. Mike going through the gears. Got a bit of loose trim on the bumper there. Over the crest, out of Surtees. Brody runs a bit wide, and this is Mike Smith's opportunity. Has he lost it because he had momentum there? But Dave Brody stays ahead, but not for very much longer because Smith is going through. No, he's not. Brody holds him off as they go into the right-hander, and now down the short straight to Westfield. Terrific scrap here for fourth position. And you can see Bristow, there he is as he goes through Sterling's, the left-hander. Third, fourth and fifth, almost together here are the leaders. Rob Gravitt slingshotting out of the right-hander and Clark Curve. Down the straight, he tucks it very tight to the arm curve. Into Paddock, Rouse, the leader. Gravit in second place. Now then, Rob Gravit's won four races already. Andy Rouse has won three races. Is he going to even it by staying ahead of Rob Gravit? They're coming out of Druids. Dropping down to Graham Hill Bend. Rob Gravit in an ideal position to attack here. He's close up behind the wing of Andy Rouse's car as they go into 13th, the left-hander. He's going through on the inside. Rob Gravitt taking the lead from Andy Rouse. He's got the line, Andy has to run wide. Look back, there he is. 145 miles an hour. Pilgrims to Hawthorne, the right-hander, which they're approaching now, underneath the bridge. This is Hawthorne. There is Andy Rouse behind in second position. You can read the word Andy on his number plate. Now, from Hawthorne's to Westfield, the right-hander. Look at this, terrific. You 
can see Andy Rouse's car pitching on the suspension. Now this is Dingle Dell, through Dingle Dell corner. Over the curve, over the curve, over the curve. Now down to the left-hander and Sterling's. From Sterling's down into clearways. And Rob Gravitt is leading. Is he going to stay ahead? No, he's not. Because Andy Rouse goes through. And Rob Gravitt slows down. What has happened? He slowed right down. And now Bristo goes past to second place past Rob Gravitt. Dave Brody and Mike Smith go past third and fourth, and poor Rob Gravin is going to be out of the race. He's touring alongside the pits, and he pulls off. Why? Well, who knows? The car looks all right. This is how Andy Rouse saw it. Just a puff of smoke from Gravit's car there. Closes right up on the Ford and passed. What on earth happened? Um, the gear lead was broken, the gearbox was broken. So that was it, no gears. And that is rotten luck for Rob, who was certainly looking good for a fifth win. So now, Rouse leads, Bristow second, Brody third, Smith fourth, Edwards fifth, and Sean Walker in sixth place, and somebody off. It's Dave Pinkney Sierra, and that looks like a very expensive bit of arm code bumping. All the bodywork battered. Is Dave Pinkney battered? No, he's not. He's out of the car. He's perfectly all right. And there's another one. John Clark's BMW M3, and that is an excellent recovery. Two more BMWs there. Number 35, Ian Forrest, giving last year's British champion Frank Sidner a very hard time. Battling for second in Class B with the BMW of James Weaver ahead of them, leading the class. Sidner, Forrest... There ahead is James Weaver, class leader and championship leader in his BMW. Druids, great fight for second place. Bristow's got it at the moment. Brody just behind it. This is Mike Smith, down to Graham Hill Bend at well over 100 miles an hour. And Mike is still recovering from a broken ankle from that very nasty helicopter crash. Down into second gear for the left-hander at 30s. Brody, Mike Smith tucked right up behind him. Brody's gone onto the curve. Now, Mike Smith's opportunity. He's got the momentum. Can he get through? There's Dave Brody in front. And he staves Mike Smith off as they go into Hawthorne's. So it's still Bristow, Brody, Mike Smith. And it looks as though they're catching Lawrence Bristow in second position. That's the winner of the one-hour race at Donington who drove with Tiffany Dell, but through Dingle Dell they go. Lapping, number 83, the veteran, Tony Lanfranchi in the Astra. One, two, three, past Lanfranchi they go, and Guy Edwards is catching Mike Smith. Down to Clearways, Rouse is still ahead. Bristow second, Brody third, Smith fourth, Guy Edwards in fifth position. Into Paddock, now there is Rouse. Here is the battle for second position, Bristow, Brody and Smith. Seven laps to go, and Smith and Brody most definitely are catching Lawrence Bristow in the Blue Sierra. Up to Druids, number six, Bristow, second place. Brody takes a look on the right-hand side, dodges back, hugs the curb. Bristow runs very wide on the exit, and that gives Dave Brody the chance to close up. He's right up alongside him, going round the left-hander at Graham Hill Bend. He's still there as they come up to Surtees, but Bristow has got the inside line, and surely he must get away. But no, Brody's, Brody is hanging on, and Mike Smith is going through behind him too. Brody goes up into second place, Mike Smith goes up into third. We're riding with Lawrence Bristow. There goes Brody. There is Smith. And he is through up into third position. And so in just a few yards, Lawrence Christo has gone down from second to fourth, with Smith and Brody ahead of him. Wow. There they go. Second, third, fourth. But now it's Brody, Smith, and Christo. And Edwards. There is Guy Edwards in fifth place. And he's gaining on the three ahead as they go through. in 
tied to the apex. In the apex, but Bristow's dropping back a bit as they go uphill and rise into Druids. Number 19, Dave Brody. He's had his problems this season. He's got one now. It's Mike Smith. And that's Alan Minshaw retiring his Volkswagen Golf. And it looks as though the right front tyre is rubbing the bodywork. Now, that's Ray Arms. That's another retirement, the Honda Civic. But I must say, he hasn't parked in a very sensible place. He's right on the tarmac on the Brabham Street. Couldn't he have pulled over further onto the grass? And the leaders are bearing down on him. Rouse has gone by. There's Brody, chased by Smith. And Bristow has got Edwards right in his slipstream. Guy Edwards pulling across to try and pass Bristow. And he only just misses Arms' Honda Civic. That was a very close thing. And Guy Edwards goes through. Edwards up into fourth position. But not for long. He's run very wide indeed. Out onto the runoff. And Lawrence Bristow is back in fourth. Number six, Bristow up into fourth position and Guy Edwards has got it all to do again. Coming down to Graham Hill then. Along the bottom straight, so called, into 30s and Guy Edwards is doing it. He's back with Bristow already. Pilgrims drop. Brody and Smith are catching Jeff Kimber Smith's Toyota. Behind them, Bristow and Edwards. Out of Hawthorne. Brody past Kimber Smith. Smith past Kimber Smith. No, he's lost it! And Kimber Smith hits him. That contact, that is a big one. Thomas Metzera goes through. And that was so sudden, I suspect something broke. And from the look of that wheel, it was the rear suspension. And Guy Edwards is out too. Andy Rouse's teammate. Mike Smith getting out of the car. What a pity, because that was a great drive. And you can see how he's still limping. Mike looks at the car. And now here's a replay in car with Mike Smith. Chasing Dave Brody. Catching Jeff Kimber Smith's Toyota. Brody in front. Brody goes past. Smith goes past. Loses it. Fights it. But that was most certainly not Mike Smith's fault. And the innocent Jeff Kimber Smith powers on to the body shot. So, how did Kimber Smith see that big crunch? Just like this. We're with it. There goes Brody. And whoops, there's Mike Smith. Off onto the grass, but no problem. On we go. And Jeff Kimber Smith shakes his head. I bet that made his glasses mist up. And now the adopted Australian Thomas Metzera, the winner of last year's Bathurst 1000 and a Brands Hatch racing instructor, is in third place. Number six, Lawrence Bristow, his teammate ahead of him. So, this is a great race for the two Labatt's men. They are almost together. Second and third, Bristow and Metzera, the two blue cars. Last lap, Andy Rouse, the man from Warwickshire, has led every lap. And he's going to win. He's put up the fastest lap of 100.27 miles an hour. He's just lapped Mike O'Brien, number 17 there. He's got his headlights blazing to let the people know he's coming through. Into Dingle Dell Corner for the last time. Up to Sterling's for the last time. He's now just got that little short straight after Sterling's as the back of the car steps out and Andy corrects it to go into the right-hander at Clearways, which leads into Clark Kerr. Another win for the touring car champion of champions, Andy Rouse, but even more important than that, nine points for victory. So Andy Rouse levels the score over Rob Gravitt, four wins apiece. Excellent race for the Labatt's team, second and third via Bristow and Mazera. Sean Walker fourth, Mike Newman fifth, and Graham Good sixth. Rouse engineered cars filling the first three places, and it could have been four if Guy Edwards hadn't joined Mike Smith in the Westfield gravel trap. Uh, uh, Smithy's suspension broke, and uh, I had nowhere to go. I had to spin to avoid him. Otherwise, I'd have collected him too. I'm very sorry. Oh, no, it wasn't your fault, <laughs> was it? I mean, it wasn't. Uh, yeah, no. It looked like your wheel collapsed. Yeah.
or something like that. So, you know, it's a pity because I think we had a good chance of finishing behind Andy there. It may be four wins apiece, but it's Rob Gravitt ahead of Andy Rouse in the Class A Championship. Eight points the difference, Harvey and Bristow third and fourth. So to what's been described as the Monaco of the Midlands, the Birmingham Super Prix round. Two points still separate Weaver and Cleland in the overall championship, but little will separate Gravit, Rouse and the Labatt men at the head of the Birmingham field. gentleman pushed me into the barrier. Just, uh, just, just a big push on the back end and knocked me into the barrier. Just went around. It's done that and it's done the, the front end of the car in as well. And the seat broke on impact. And now let's see how James Weaver saw Mike's accident. And he sees Mike hit Gary Van Cowan Sierra and lose it. And Weaver loses two places. Down to fourth in Class B goes Godfrey Hall and John Llewellyn. And here's the BMW battle. Hall and Llewellyn. Frank Sidner leads Class B with good behind him. Now there's Hall in the black BMW. Llewellyn, Weaver, Forrest. Frank Sidner, 11th place. Graham Good chasing him in the Sierra. 12th. And it's all go at the front. Gravit, Harvey, Rouse, Bristow. There's Harvey. First to Thruxton. Round the 180 degree. 50 mile an hour. Alfred's corner closing right up on us. Going through, is he? Is he? He's right up alongside. He's past us. Harvey goes into the lead ahead of Rob Gravitt. What a fantastic passing manoeuvre. And into Perodo corner, it's Harvey leading. And now there is Rouse. He's in third place, following us with Rob Gravitt. But Rouse is really forcing. You can see the Sierra going by. Is it fast? There's Bristow in the background, in fourth position, and Rouse is through. It's Harvey leading, Rouse second, Bristow in fourth position, Gravit is third, and behind them it's Chris Hodges in fifth place, Sean Walker is sixth, Guy Edwards is in seventh place, and they're coming through to complete a lap. Let's have a look 
at it from Gravit's car point of view. There goes Bristow on the right. We've swung right out wide. There's Bristow again. We've hit the Armco, don't forget. And now Bristow goes through and Hodges closes right up. So now it's Harvey leading. Rouse second, Bristow third. Hodges is up into fourth place. There is Gravit in fifth position. Behind him, Sean Walker and Guy Edwards. There's Gravit. out of Cavendish Corner, coming towards us, Rob Gravitt in a very bent Sierra, looking back from Gravitt's car, that is Sean Walker from Elstree in sixth position, ex-car champion, ex-sports 2000 champion, he's challenging Gravitt, he's going for fifth position, and he takes fifth position, can Gravitt fight back this time like he did before, and the answer is no, Sean Walker holds that to retain the overall championship lead and he's only fourth in his BMW. There is John Llewellyn, third in his class. And Weaver's got to get past him. He's got to get past Godfrey Hall. He has got to get past Frank Sittner to take the class lead in order to benefit his chances in the overall championship. 320 horsepower, left-hand drive, six speed, 150 miles an hour, almost in parts in the BMW. performance but as I say that Weaver goes through and Llewellyn keeps his place Godfrey Hall in the back BMW in front of the white one through the Munro kick now Peter Marwell Hill tremendously fast this up to Halford's corner and this could be James Weaver's chance he's got the works engine the pro drive car he should have more performance than Llewellyn to Halfords, right down through the gearbox, tucking tight to the Armco, Godfrey Hall in front, John Llewellyn in the white car, through the Munro King, down the Belgrave bend in middle way, and through goes James Weaver, but it's all action at the front, there is Harvey, number seven leading, Rouse behind him in second place, Bristow in third, rocking on the softer suspension that they have to use for this bumpy street circuit. Harvey going very wide in car with Andy Rouse chasing Harvey in front and immediately behind us is Lawrence Bristow just watch the master at work watch his hands on the wheel watch the gear change Harvey Rouse Bristow and Andy Rouse keeps showing the nose of his Sierra to Tim Harvey to try and fluster him but Tim's got a lot of experience he'll be hard to fluster Lawrence Bristow is trying to do the same thing to Andy Rouse. 550 horsepower, that is not your average Sierra. It can do 180 miles an hour. Not here, but it can do. And Andy Rouse is going for it. Absolute precision. Beat in the power when he gets it straight. He's got the king to go through. Away. Tim Harvey gets the power down beautifully. They're closing up on a tail ender. This could change things if he gets in the way. You can see him getting closer and closer. And Rouse takes his opportunity. Look at Andy Rouse now. Can he dive through the middle? Tim Harvey, number seven, on the right. Rouse, they've both taken the tail ender. Now Lawrence Bristow is going to do the same thing. Rouse attacks. One mistake by Tim Harvey, and he Rouse built Tim Harvey's Sierra and Lawrence Bristow's car. He knows every millimetre of both of them and his own car. And don't forget, he can hardly see the track ahead. It's like following a tube of steel made of Armco. Absolutely together. Lawrence Bristow biding his time. If either of them goes off, he'll benefit and go through. Now they're closing up on two tail enders. And one of them is John Morris's gold Volkswagen. Harvey nearly touches the Armco. Rouse almost does the same thing. Look at the speed here. Just watch them absolutely gobble up that mate. It's as though he's on the slow lane of the motorway. Now there's Morris. There's Morris in the black Volkswagen. Through goes Harvey. Through goes Bristol.
Christo. Morris runs wide. Out of Halfords. This is absolutely superb motor racing. At the limit, and Rouse is going for it now. He's up alongside Harvey. Christo is still there behind. And he is certainly not having it all his own way like he did last year. And look how Tim Harvey uses all the track he has to. And that's why it makes it so difficult to get past on this circuit. But they've got to get past Jeremy Rossiter's Vauxhall Astra. Is it going to be Rouse darting through? No. Tim Harvey right up alongside the arm and he nearly takes Rossiter with him, who's actually got the right indicator we can say come through, and they both do it. Now, how much longer can Tim Harvey resist this incredible pressure from Andy Rouse? Well, he's actually pulling away a bit there. set up another victory for Andy Rouse in the caliber four. Behind him, a battle for second between Harvey and Bristow that raged till the last lap. That's Morodo. Now down to Halford's elbow. And Bristow comes again. Lawrence is absolutely on the edge of adhesion, but then so is Tim Harvey. So Class A as fiercely contested as ever, but overall, the championship was still between James Weaver and John Cleland, who were relentlessly picking up their class wins. Two points remained the gap, and the final two rounds would decide the title. The first of these was at Donington. Qualifying had been wet at the Derbyshire circuit, and wet conditions can produce surprises. And it was certainly a surprise when Mike Newman stole onto the front row, albeit two seconds slower than pole man Rob Gravitt. After a season of following the pack, Newman now needed instruction in following the pace car. Okay. There's only one, there's only yeah. one pace lap, not yeah. a different uh, on a green flag lap. Okay. Directly behind Newman on the grid, right. Dave Brody. With Mad Mike Newman in front. Mad Mike Newman on the front row of the grid. We're all petrified. Okay? The gentleman racer. Donington's extra loop, the Melbourne hairpin, would be another new experience for the SO British Championship. Gravitt's pole position had been his fourth of the season, the first time we'd seen Newman on the front row, and Lawrence Bristow, the leading Labatt's runner. The third row, Tim Harvey and Andy Rouse. Mechanical problems had meant that both had missed the best of the qualifying conditions. David Sears, standing in for Guy Edwards, shared the fourth row with Jerry Marney. Further down, Frank Sittner leads the Class B qualifiers. Commentary comes from a man who tasted victory in the championship at Donington back in May, Tiff Nidell. Out of Goddard then, the field kept in a tight orderly queue due to the tight hairpin, accelerating across the line and it uh, looks like Rob Gravitt again has got the power down well, made the pole position, he's even able to move over there, takes the racing line from Mike Newman, holding his second place, Lawrence Bristow trying to go around the outside as the rest of the field storms through Redgate. 
on down through Craner Curbs and grab it already. Bristo tries the long outside route around the outside of New, but I don't think he'll get away with that. So still third, grab it easing away while the rest of the field now bottles up behind Mike Newman. Lawrence looking for his teammate Tim Harvey, a good start up to fourth place. Andy Rouse behind that. Up to McLean's and uh, Harvey there. Harvey seeing a, an inside line on his teammates, moves up to third ahead of Bristo. In car now with Andy Rouse, he's got the two Labatt twins ahead of him. Bristow trying to get that third place back and uh, not getting through and getting this car sideways. Well, this has given Andy a chance now to close up on Lawrence Bristow. Down the straight they go in the slipstream. Can Rouse get by? He looks up the inside. And there we see Rouse alongside Bristow now. Yes, and that's Rouse through to fourth place. The S is the high curbing there, pushing that uh, Graham Good, using a little bit of the grass. Thomas Mazira, Carl Jones diving up the inside and taking two places. Harvey looking inside Newman and goes through into the Melbourne hairpin. There's Gravit, the leader. Harvey really break late to get past there, went very wide, and in fact he's lost the place again. Mike Newman back up the inside, accelerating out up to this tight final hairpin, the Goddard's hairpin left, a puff of smoke as Gravit locks the front wheel, and Harvey now has got to try that overtaking manoeuvre again. Down towards Red Redgate, Newman holds the inside line, Harvey's going to try this long outside line, it's possible at Redgate, and, and indeed Tim gets through, so that's a nice overtaking manoeuvre, Harvey forcing his way forward in these opening laps, and now He's going to chase after Gravit, leaving Andy Rouse to try and get past Newman. Down to the old hairpin, Rouse also sliding straight through. A neat manoeuvre, pushes Newman back another place. And Lawrence Bristow, who was at the front of this queue, now has to try and get past Newman himself. And I think he's done it, he's up the inside, yes. That should be through, but Newman comes back with a slight touch there. And, well, that's a great shame. Lawrence Bristow, who's... Uh, qualified so well and he's not too happy either. Up front though, Gravit leads, Harvey second and Rouse close right up. So these three, the main winners so far this year, they're in for another head-to-head -head battle. Harvey straight away looks up the inside and he's through. Pushes Gravit wide, the same pass he went through Newman and uh, Rouse tried to get through as well as Gravit goes wide. We've got three Sierra side by side. Rouse unable to make the most of it, so it's now Harvey, Gravit, Rouse. But, uh, Sierra's everywhere. Rob Gravit tried to go around the outside of Harvey. Rouse comes up the inside. And uh, it's going to be Harvey now with a fair lead as the other two lean on each other in the background. Is it going to be Gravit? I think Gravit's got the inside line here, yes. Rouse concedes the corner. And it's now Harvey, Gravit, Rouse. Down Craner Curves. It's very fast and uh, a lot of braking there from Gravit. Harvey disappears in the distance. And Rouse was almost surprised there, he couldn't overtake at that point. Oversteering into the old hairpin, called the hairpin, but it's the fastest corner on the circuit. And uh, up now towards McLean's, this tricky corner, you have to dab the brakes approaching the left-hand curve. Difficult braking area this. Down to third gear then for the McLean's corner. And out on the curves, Harvey trying to get away. He sees the two in the background having a dice. He's trying to make as much distance as possible, but trying to get too much of that 500 horsepower down on the track too early. So uh, that slide costing him a bit of his lead. In the background, we see David Sears moving up well. He's got past Newman and left the pack behind. Sears uh, substituting this weekend for Guy Woods in the second Calibre Sierra. down now towards the, the Melbourne hairpin, Harvey in the lead, Gravit second, these three now in a bit of breathing space after those frantic opening laps, and here we see the BMW battle, the uh, traditional teammates waging war around the background, Lawrence Bristow, well he was making up ground in that earlier spin, and there Thomas Mazira took his line, and uh, a rather over-ambitious overtaking manoeuvre by Lawrence. But the BMW boys, we see in fact is sitting and leading at the moment from James Weaver, Weaver of course the championship contender of these two, leading the championship. Weaver seeing an indicator up ahead, but I think it's going to be after this Goddard's hairpin that uh, Frank Sittler's going to let his championship leading teammate pass. Weaver, yes, yeah, sure enough, Sittler pulling to the left. James Weaver's going to be given the inside line for Redgate corner. These two teammates working well together now to try and win this championship for BMW. 
James, in fact, faking break. So that's all through. Into the pit lane, that's Jerry Marnie, obviously in problems. Also in the pit lane, that's Thomas Mazar in the JQF Engineering Sierra. We saw him earlier here being attacked by Lawrence Bristow in a very over-ambitious overtaking manoeuvre. Lawrence trying to make up lost ground, and maybe that's why Mazara's in the pits. But uh, Lawrence here, still going strong, still fighting back again. Smoke pouring off the bodywork. Obviously a, a bit of a dent there, which has caused the tyre to rub. Also smoking slightly is the, the leader, his teammate Tim Harvey. I hope there's no problems there. Again, uh, maybe a little bit of bodywork damage has pushed the bodywork onto the tyre, but uh, Tim's certainly not going any slower for it. And uh, holding on ahead of Gravis and Rouse. Down the Craner curves, Harvey leads. A little bit of breathing space at the moment. That puff of smoke again, it seems to come off the rear right corner, so uh, maybe that is a little bit of bodywork touching, but certainly not slowing him at all. And uh, these two slightly pulling away from Rouse. At the back, we see the BMWs battling away, and here we see uh, James Weaver now got to always have the problem of a Sierra holding him up sometimes, and that's a uh, a Sierra with a problem, that's Dave Brody's Sierra, and there's a lot of puffs of smoke coming out of the back, so uh, Brody falling backwards, he qualified well on the second row of the grid, but here we see James Weaver, bouncing over the curb, James very fast, very smooth, and uh, he's going to have to sort out the Sierra, because often he can get held up in the corners, but the puffs of smoke, I think, indicate that he won't be long before he gets past. Then, more of a problem for James though, is he needs to get on, he needs to win his class and get past this lap to keep his championship hopes alive. The, uh, the, the class winners, you only score your best 11 from 13 results and uh, so far with the nine races behind, uh, James dropping his worst two scores has nine wins, eight of them with fastest lap. His nearest rival, John Clellan, has nine wins, all with fastest lap. So uh, with this round of one more after, James can only get two more maximums with fastest laps, whereas this man, John Cleland, if he wins today with fastest lap and does that again at Silverstone, he'll end up with a full 11 maximum scores, all with fastest lap, and uh, that would make John Cleland the British Touring Car Champion by one point. So both these drivers, they know what they have to do, and uh, they need the support of their teammates. And, uh, well, there we see Frank Sittner really uh, supporting his teammate. Frank obviously worried he put in a bit of a fast lap there and actually hit the brakes to uh, not count that lap. Here in the pits, that is Dave Brody. I'm not sure what that is they're replacing, but that obviously was the problem with the car. We saw it puffing smoke and in trouble, and uh, Brody in the pit. Mechanics working away frantically getting back. Well, up front, the battle now is, uh, is raging. Tim Harvey there over the curves of the S's, they're right in amongst the back markers. Rob Gravitt losing a bit of ground as he had to go wide around the outside. And uh, no sign of Andy Rouse at the moment, he's dropping away slightly. So really it's these two out front battling for the lead. Gravitt into the Melbourne air pit. Harvey escaping ahead of him. A little bit of breathing space as Gravitt slides into oversteer, getting the power down. There we see Andy Rouse slowly taking the back markers. And uh, Tim Harvey driving a very, very good race out front. Obviously under pressure, but not letting Gravitt get on top of him. Rouse a little bit closer, perhaps, now that he's got through those back markers. So, Harvey making the most of the back markers, getting well ahead. That's Dave Brody just rejoining the race as Gravitt goes through. Further down the field, here this is Rob Gravitt's teammate, Mike Smith, trying to get ninth place off of Carl Jones. Both these drivers had problems in practice, both very quick indeed, and uh, here Carl Jones taking the inside, a dab of the brakes to check they're there before breaking into Redgate. Mike, no way through on this occasion, but uh, he's right up the back of Carl Jones, sliding wide, getting the power on, and sliding out. Up front though, the leaders still amongst the back markers. They both pop out in unison, to overtake another man, and again, Harvey gets that slower car, well, slower in his class, John Morris and Volkswagen, but uh, grab it going through and trying to close the gap, but all the time, Harvey seems to have the edge. Ahead of him, the uh, John Clayton's teammates, the battling box of Astros, that's Jeremy Rossiter and uh, Louise Aitken Walker, but grab it now right behind Harvey, a little bit of a problem when two cars are racing ahead of each other, but he should be able to get by both of them on the power acceleration up to Melbourne here, but indeed, one of them indicating to let the leaders through. So, both leaders through. Gravit leaves his braking very late there, closes right up, but uh, loses ground in the end because he had to slide so wide, he braked too late. Up to Goddard, the tight left-hand pair, but again, 
from Strap, it's really breaking it up. Front wheel locked up all the way in before it picked up off the ground. Rob slides the long, long way round the outside of the hairpin and Harvey escapes. Here at BMWs, we see Sitlatone through past Weaver. I hope James hasn't got a problem. But uh, we didn't expect that to happen after we saw Sitton and let his team leader through. But in car with James Weaver, doesn't seem to be any problems. Maybe Frank's decided he wants to turn out the lead. This is local circuit, Donington. Frank also sliding wide at the hairpins, missing the apex, but uh, often a problem with these saloon cars getting into the apex. So Frank Signer leads the BMW team. Weaver obviously not really in any problems, he's not going to the pits, so uh, we assume that they're all happy, whereas these two outfront are really having a battle. Harvey still leads, but uh, grab it now closer than really we've seen for quite a time, and uh, now really in a position to maybe have an overtake maneuver down to the S. Harvey takes the racing line, Rob Gravit doesn't have a look up the inside, Harvey obviously confident he can break late and not allow Gravit through. Very neat through the S's there, gets the power down, accelerating up to Melbourne. Now this is where Gravit's been breaking late, maybe he'll have a go this time. Up the inside indeed, Rob Gravit goes through, tremendously late on the brakes, but he paid the penalty, and uh, really there was no hope of getting around the corner at that speed, so Harvey says, well I'll just have my lead back. Thank you very much Rob, you've got to do that again. Again, he tries it as well. Rob Gravit really very, very late on the brakes, but uh, it's not paying dividends because he always ends up being slow out of the corners. And it's always a problem when trying to overtake. You brake late, you tend to slide wide at the corner and then not get the power down as quick as the other driver. But still, he's right in Harvey's wheel tracks. Again, the puff of smoke from the front. So Rob really fighting. This is great saloon car racing. And uh, Harvey all the time being very good with the back markers, picking the right line, not making any mistakes. Tim driving a very professional race under this intense pressure from Rob Gravit. You can't get much closer than that. Up to McLean. This battle pulled well away from Andy Rouse, who's now not even in sight in the background. So these two really setting a searing pace. Harvey very neat under such intense pressure. Rabbit now very close. If he can get the power down now, get onto the straight behind Harvey, but no sort of black marks being left by the tyres. Another twitch at the end of the corner, and there Rob will be upset because he had the right position to try and get in the slips and the straights. So he got too greedy, tried to go for too much power, the car slid out, and uh, that means he's not close enough to outbreak at the end of the straight. Up to the Melbourne hairpin where we saw Gravit try so hard on the last lap. Again, he closes in under braking, but once more, slides wide. So, Rob Gravit very late on the brakes, but uh, not getting out of the corners as quick as Tim Harvey is. Okay. Well, I think Rob needs to, he's really absolutely got his head down the red haze. There is Tiba urging him on, three laps to go, and he's trying his hardest and uh, maybe trying too hard. So with three laps to go, the order Harvey and Gravit well ahead, and Rouse, his teammate Sears, following behind. And then there's a good battle for fifth between uh, Graham Good and Sean Walker. Here indeed we see that battle, and Sean Walker taking that fifth place off Graham Good as they start what's three laps left of racing, a good battle for fifth place. Sean Walker probably having his best race so far this year and uh, taking the inside line down to Redgate to make sure Good doesn't come straight back at him. Oh, and there, that's John Morris and a multiple roll. John looks all right, head moving with great relief in the car. The marshal's quick on the scene, but that was a very, very severe roll for John Morris in his Volkswagen Golf. He's uh, obviously a bit winded by it, but uh, we saw his head moving and there we see the marshals on the scene and yes, John getting out perfectly all right. But as the car is already rolling, as it came into camera shot and uh, once bouncing, that really shows you know how quick the cars are going. When they get it wrong and they get launched, it's a big accident. In car, this is Mike Smith and uh, Mike also getting a bit greedy with his horsepower, the back breaking away under power, and uh, Mike held it very well on the grass for a short while, but back on the track, but uh, he'll still be angry with himself. The BMWs, well, that's Frank sitting there, only a couple of laps left now, and uh, Frank, the indicator on again. There you are, James. I've had my share of leading, but uh, it's James Weaver heading for another class victory. 
Presumably the team have got it right and also fastest lap. So the last lap for leaders, and we see now in fact that Tim has pulled away. Rob Drabbit not as close as he has been when he was challenging so hard, breaking so late in those hairpins. And uh, Tim, well, he's driven a very, very good race, very professional. That puff of smoke again from the rear right corner as the car sets down through the long left-handed corner. And uh, Tim being let by by a BMW driver, moving over very neatly. And as long as there's no real disaster on this last lap, I can't see anything stopping Tim Harvey from scoring a very, very impressive win with uh, Rob Gravitt and Andy Rouse, both in healthy cars, no retirements from the other two top winners, the people who won most of the races, Gravitt having won four and Rouse five. This is going to be Tim Harvey's second win of the year and uh, accelerating down the straight for the last time, only the S's and a couple of hairpins to cause any problems and Rob not late enough for one of those famous late-breaking lunges. So uh, Tim Harvey up to the Melbourne hairpin, Rob Gravitt really not close enough this time at all to get by and uh, it's a nice way to end a race having a little bit of a breathing space. Headlights are blazed to warn any back markers that uh, the leader is on his way. So Tim Harvey looking for the third win of the year for the Labatt's team and it's been a very good win indeed. Out of the tight got his hair bin, Harvey wins. Rob Gravitt gave his best but it's second for him. Harvey from Gravett, Rouse third, David Sears fourth, Sean Walker fifth, Graham Good sixth. But a long overdue victory for Tim Harvey in a race of the highest quality. Oh, brilliant. So pleased with that one. Oh, marvellous. That was the best race all year. Beach Birmingham. Class A championship table, Andy Rouse's point deduction for engine irregularities reinstated under appeal, so he trails Gravit by three with Tim Harvey third. All went to plan in the other classes. James Weaver led home his BMW teammate Frank Sidner in Class B. In Class C, John Cleland led home his Vauxhall teammate Louise Aitken Walker, who'd held off the challenge of Jeremy Rossiter to claim second in class. Class D, once again, Ray Arms in the Honda Civic, 10 seconds ahead of Jeff Kimber-Smith. So overall, it's still a two-point gap between Weaver and Cleland, coming to the last round of Silverstone. But with only the best 11 scores out of 13 counting, the issue is that if both win their class and take fastest lap at Silverstone, Cleland will win the title by one point. As ever, it's a rolling start for the 15-lap race over Silverstone's full 2.9-mile Grand Prix circuit. And the 35 cars and drivers set off after the pace car in ideal conditions. But not John Cleland, that's Cleland at the back of the grid and everybody's surging past him and he seems to be having some sort of a gear selection problem. Now, even if he gets going, he's got to stay at the back, that's the rule he's got going, there's the Jaguar fire tender going ahead of him, and he's away. Let's see what he does. Now he's past the Jaguar, but sensibly he is staying last. Actually, I don't think it's too much of a setback. John's Astra is so fast that it should catch all his class rivals quite easily. But we'll see. Round Coff's corner, last on the grid, John Cleland with a chance of the championship. But there's something new up front. Proudly leading round in pole position, Welshman Carl Jones from Lampter. It's his first pole position, a superb achievement against the high-budget teams. But Carl did his Banzai lap on a damp track. Now it's bone dry. Maybe that'll affect his tyres. So there he is, pole position. Andy Rouse, second on the grid. Rob Gravitt, the championship class leader, third. And Chris Hodgetts from Redditch, a superb fourth with a new team. Mike Smith, fifth in the sister car of Rob Gravitt. Guy Edwards, sixth in, he says, his last race for a while. Tim Harvey, seventh, that's well down for him. And Graham Good, a strong eighth. Bristow, who's Harvey's teammate, ninth position. Veteran Dave Brody in tenth place. Sean Walker is eleventh. And Blackburn's Mike Newman, twelfth. Twelve Sierra Cosworths. James Weavers, the fastest BMW at thirteen. There, number 56, the joint championship leader John Cleland in the Vauxhall Astra, starting 
last. Out of the complex. Don't forget it is a rolling start. The pace car in front. It will peel away into the pit lane as they come out of the right hand of Woodcote. He does so and it's 35 Road Rockets go down to Cox Corner. Rob Gravitz leading, Jones is second on the left. Andy Rouse on the outside is in third position and Tim Harvey's up into fourth place. Now we're in car with Andy Rouse, Jones and Gravit ahead, Harvey and Smith have gone past. Now, that is Mike Smith in the red and white Sierra on the right. We're riding with Andy Rouse, we're past Mike Smith. Into the right-hander at Beckett's. Jones running very wide, Harvey's gone up into second place. Guy Edwards over the kerb, dropping back. That's cost him dear. Back in car with Andy Rouse. Carl Jones ahead. Now down the hangar street, building to 155 miles an hour. Rob Gravitt leads. Harvey second. Then together, it's Rouse, Jones, Smith, and Graham Goode into Stowe Corner. Rouse up into third position outside Carl Jones. So now down into Club Corner for the first time. Gravitt, Harvey, Rouse. Carl Jones with the yellow covers on his headlights in fourth position. with Lawrence Bristow now. He is in seventh position, out of Abbey at 140 miles an hour. Graham Goode ahead in sixth place, and we're closing up on him very fast indeed. Into the left, now the second part of the corner, the right-hander, and he's tapped Goode, he's hit Goode, spun him round. And Zolf, straight into Graham Goode's car, goes Dave Brody, and they are obviously both out of the race. Rob Gravitt is leading, Andy Rouse is now up into second place. There he goes, Tim Harvey in third position in the blue Sierra. In car with Rouse now, just watch his hands on the steering wheel, on the gear lever. Second, chasing Rob Gravitt. Into the left-hander at Maggot, that's about 140 miles an hour. Down to Beckett, 75 miles an hour. Four wins to Rob Gravitt, five wins to Andy Rouse, and Rouse needs to win this one for the class championship. Down the hangar straight now, out of chapel. 155 miles an hour soon, and Rouse is going for it. He's dodging about behind Gravitt's car, and he's powering straight past. There is a real horsepower advantage there. So Gravitt in second position. Harvey is still third, and Rouse has now got a clear track in front of him, and so has Dave Brody, but for all the wrong reasons. Yet another disappointment in a very contentious season, and that's Graham Goode's car being recovered. Dave Brody, bit of whiplash it looks like. He looks fit enough, sprinting away back to the pits. Now here's a replay of Good spin. Now watch him very carefully. He's hit by Bristow, who hits him again. That's twice. 180 degree spin, and Brody, unsighted, goes straight into him. Paul Graham out of the race through no fault of his own. And at the complex, it's Rouse leading. Gravitt second. Harvey in third position. Those three have broken away from the rest. First, second, and third. They are all race winners, and the battle is on. Through the chicane, Rouse. That's the order. Rouse leading, Gravit second, Harvey in third position, Bristow fourth, Smith fifth, Jones sixth, Walker is seventh, and Hodgetts is in eighth position. Now there is Jones, Walker, Hodgetts, and back at the complex, championship leader John Cleland is up to 23rd out of 35, and he's leading his class. He's broken the lap record, and that will do nicely, John. There's his rival, James Weaver. He is leading Class B in the BMW M3. Hodgins is fifth. Chris Hodgins, number 25, has gone ahead of Mike Smith into fifth position. Smith down to sixth, Jones down to seventh. And Hodgins, in the car previously driven by Gerrit Van Cowen, the Dutchman. And Chris is really peddling it. No change at the front, and if Andy Rouse stays first, he will provisionally win the class championship. But there's going to be a lot of arguing before that happens. Lap 11, there's the order. Rouse, Gravit, Harvey, Bristow, four, Hodgetts, fifth, Smith, six, Edwards in seventh position. 
complex, Nick Bay in the red by Turbo Maserati is being engulfed. Mike Smith has already passed him, Guy Edwards and Carl Jones, and there is Jones, will be doing so soon. Hodgetts, fifth position. Smith in sixth place. Now there is May, and sure enough, Guy Edwards goes through, passes the Maserati, he will take Carl Jones with him shortly, an in-car with Marnie, not making any impression on Sean Walker as he comes out of Cox Corner, onto Maggots, goes up a gear, and another. Now Beckett's down through the gearbox. And there they go, Walker and Marnie. Now, they are out of Chapel Curve, down the hangar straight, chasing Nick May. Sean Walker goes past the Maserati. Now it is Jerry Marnie's turn, right up alongside him into the racing line. And there's contact. And he's lost it. Jerry Marnie's lost it. Looks over his shoulder, straight onto the gravel trap. And that is it. Wally! Wally! I don't think Jerry is at all happy. And I suppose you can hardly blame him. Well, his race is well and truly over. Now, let's have a look at it again. Barney on the left, May on the right. Well, Jerry's a big bloke, and I'd better watch my words, but that looked like a Marnie shove to me. Anyway, whatever, they are both out of the race, Marnie and May. And now, Rob Gravitt is on his way down to Hangar. He is right on the tail of Andy Rouse's car. Number one, Andy Rouse, race leader at Stowe. They're lapping the midfield men, including, incidentally, John Dooley there, the Alfa Romeo man who is having his first drive in a Sierra, and Andy Rouse has got his hands full of more than the steering wheel. Right behind him, Rod Gravitt going for it. Out of club. Now, up to Abbey, there's a, a slight climb here. Up to the bridge and the complex. And Gravitt is going through. Gravitt is taking the lead. He has taken the lead. And there's contact. And off goes Gravitt, not quite off. Andy Rouse keeps on his way. There's going to be a big argument about that too, I am sure. Rob Gravitt gets away. But in the process, Tim Harvey there is right up with Gravitt. So second and third are together, and Andy Rouse, the leader, has got away. The whole race transformed in a twinkling. Cox corner. Now, Rob Gravitt really has got a problem with the championship because of Tim Harvey, who's pressuring him. Look at him. If he gets by, Rob Gravitt is going to have had it. Maggots. Andy Rouse is on his way to win number six and a new lap record. One minute, 37.3. That is 110 miles an hour. Now, here is a replay of that controversial incident. Rouse into the complex, left. Look for Gravit on the left, there he is. He goes to the apex. There is absolutely nowhere for Andy Rouse to go, but he pushes his way through, shakes his fist, and Rob Gravit, there he is. Half a car ahead, but that is not enough, and he pays the price. Cops corner, Andy Rouse. And there is Rob, two and a half seconds behind him, with Harvey absolutely with the red and white car in front. But that two and a half seconds should be enough for Andy Rouse. Now here it is at Beckett's. There is the lead car. Two and a half seconds is a big lead for Rouse, but my goodness, there is no lead for Rob Gravitt. Tim Harvey's getting closer and closer all the time as they come out of Chapel Curve, down the hangar straight, Harvey is in a Rouse-prepared Sierra, and they really fly. He dummies to the left, he goes to the right and attacks Rob Gravitt. He's got the car alongside Gravitt, he hits him! Rob Gravitt's been hit again, Harvey goes through to second place. Rob Gravitt just manages to hold the car, but he hit down into third position. The champion designate, it's been a great first year for Vauxhall and for the Dave Cook racing team. There they are, and there is John's father, Bill, the team manager, as Cleland starts his last lap for his 11th win in 13 races and 12 fastest laps. An amazing achievement. Cleland on his way then. But Andy Rouse is almost home, almost a full lap ahead of Cleland into the complex.
lights blazing. This is it. Andy Rouse, appropriately, number one, wins the race and provisionally wins the class championship. Tim Harvey behind him in second place. In third position, the unfortunate Rob Gravitt. Lawrence Bristow in fourth place. Chris Hodgetts fifth. And here's the fight for six with Guy Edwards and Mike Smith. Into the chicane, Edwards is going to take it in the blue and white car. Smith in seventh place, and John Clark loses it. And I should think the car was alarmed with that. Clark chews up the Silverstone turf over the rumble strip, back onto the track to do his last lap. Meantime, almost home to win the British Touring Car Championship of 1989, John Cleland in his Vauxhall Astra 16 valve. A very potent combination indeed in their first season of touring car racing. And a very happy team too. A very happy team, a very happy combination, and an even happier John Cleland. Well done, John. Celebration then, and controversy. The controversy in Class A. Andy Rouse, named provisional winner, Rob Gravitt, immensely aggrieved after that coming together at Woodcote. This is Rouse's version. We came up through Abbey there, he was quite a distance back, and then I'll, as we sort of come up to the breaking point to go into the, uh, into the chicane there, he's right alongside me, and pushed in on the inside, and then cut across the front of me, so I had nowhere to go. So, I mean, I went all over the curbs and all the rubbish anyway, which was a big risk to me as far as damaging the car was concerned and the all is but I mean I had no choice but to hit him I mean there's, there's just nowhere for me to go mm. it was exactly the same as Sitton and Weaver earlier in the season sure. they did exactly the same thing yeah. and uh, you know he was he was a bit hasty really if he just bided his time he'd have been there with, with a crack at, at the end you know but uh, really as far from my point of view it was his fault you know and it almost screwed up my race as well it's been a hard fought series a hard fought championship was that incident simply typical of that no, it wasn't. I think it was at the end of a, a very good racing season. I think it's a sad note to finish on that. Um, I don't think it's necessary to drive like that, and, and I, I don't think I will change my driving style. I, I believe it is a non-contact sport because it's dangerous. I mean, we're travelling at very, very fast speeds, and, uh, you know, you can hurt people like that. Um, but then that's another story, isn't it? The main story is that Scotland's John Clennon claims the overall SO British Championship. Vauxhall beat BMW, but was Clennon's delayed start a problem or a well-thought-out plan? Sometimes when, when you, you rev this little last drop, it won't select the gear properly, you get too many revs on the court, and I think that's what I did for the first couple of chances. And then when I realised that all the BMWs were passing me, I thought it was maybe a better idea under the circumstances to just stay out of trouble. And then I had to let too many cars pass because I then couldn't rejoin in my grid position. So it seemed at the end of the day a safer thing to do. I spent all year staying out of the way of BMWs and I figured that I was in the pack and it was maybe better to sort of steer clear of the trouble. There was no element of a predetermined plan. Oh, not at all. Not at all. <laughs> you were a little bit worried about that before. Yes, yeah, so well, James Weaver's mechanics tried to lock me in the, in the truck before the race, so I knew there was a plan afoot somewhere. So the 1989 British Championship ends in Champagne and the appeal court. Six months now to knock out all the dents before it all starts again in a new and even more competitive formula.